coming to you live from Fort Benning, Georgia. And they've got an open house down here at their Armor Annex. I um, thought I'd show you some of the tanks they've got down here and kind of give you a video of some of the things we've seen. Yeah, there's Charlie. He's got a he's got a mug for the camera here. I want to tell you about old Henry. Yeah. There's a hole where it went through. So much for sloped armor right here. And they filled it with cement. You'll have to ask Charlie on the next podcast where he uh, learned that little tidbit. These are our all M4 Sherman tanks. Um, they've got what they call the M4 row here. We've got several different versions of the M4 tank. We started with the newest version there. And it's kind of going down the row here to the to some of the older versions. They've had, like I said, several versions of it. If you can, try to get the side of the turret. We were told by Which the turret you're looking at? Over here? Yeah, this turret over here. Yeah. If you look at the turret, this actually came off the T-23 tank that never saw service. They had built that and they didn't like the T-23's capabilities and engine, engines. They thought it was too advanced, but they took the turrets and put them on these tanks. We'll show you a T-23 here in a minute. This one here is actually an M4A3 uh, Sherman tank. Like I said, just different modifications they've done through time. To the that M4. one's got the 75 millimeter gun, I think. Yeah. But this Sherman has the yeah. 105. This has got the bad boy. As Andy Beal would say, the dirt, the dirt. The dirt, dirt. Yep. dirt gun. Can you give him a any view down the barrel? I can get it that high or not. That's a big barrel. Yeah, that's 105 millimeter. And they put that sucker on the regular old Sherman tank. And... This is your basic M4. Yes. This you can see like in your game one of the tanks. What you're going to notice, right. everybody says, well, we just looked in M4. This is the original because they had the humps. These steel plates that you see later welded on in uh, a factory in Sicily. But if you look at the humps and then you look at the Sherman that we just looked at, yeah. it's flat. It's flat, yeah. It's got more sloped armor on the newer one there and then on this one. And the reason for the plates? Uh, for ricochets. You know, so we shoot the driver. The, the driver. hatches, yeah, you got the hatches right here right. behind these plates that they welded on there to yeah, right. the That's driver's it. hatch and this probably what commander? Yeah, well, gunner. Gunner. Driver. Yeah. And then the commander up top. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but you see these bolts right here? This is how easy it was to work on the Sherman. They would take these bolts off, pull out the entire transmission, yep. put in another one, have it done in an hour. Pretty amazing. Yes, it is. Now, this is the Canadian version the of the Canadian, M4. Canadian, if you look, it'll say C. Got the US on it. C7, yeah. Yep. Am I right? This yes. is the Canadian. Yes, uh huh. Because it has the cross on the side of where the arm is. Where they weld a different, yeah. What, what, what I remember is the track. Yeah. The track is distinctly German looking, and then of course the uh, they used a different uh, spacing on the sprocket. Yeah. But any of the oh yes in the, the yeah yeah yeah. Yep. So that's the this is the same thing except that's made in America. This is still it's another nice. version, an older version of the sure. M4A3 Sherman. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's. Actually, it's a newer version. No, that goes from old to new. That really? way, yes. I know. That's but the way he talked, yes. Oh, okay. 
Okay, for the Sherman. Well, the, you've got different sloped armor yeah, right. on these. That's about the only difference. But and, and this is my favorite. Yes, this is it. Charlie's in love with it. Jumbo. Jumbo. Hey. Yeah, yeah. This is the Sherman Jumbo here. This is, and no, we, this is the first time we've actually seen one of these in, in person, so. Yeah. You see where they've added a bunch oh, yeah. of armor? Yes. The armor is a layered, lot thicker. Yes. Layered thickness. And, and look at that American welding. Woo wee. Well, yeah, you can tell Sharp. American was a lot better than the Russian. Yeah. But see how smooth turret is? This is actually a T23 turret, and later when I will show it, smoothness, and then you'll see in the back where it angles out. Oh, back, yeah, back behind the, yeah. Right. Yep. But the weird thing that you're gonna notice is right here with the gun, what they call a gun mantlet. Yeah. That's the T23 mantlet, but if you look at the Sherman, they use the old yeah. slide up and down. Yeah. But that one's got more spaced armor. That could take a pretty good hit. Oh, yeah, up front there, wow. A lot thicker. Yep. This is the M4A1. This is pretty much where it started. And you now can see the, a huge difference on this the... This was the flame unit. Yes, they this is the one with the flamethrower, yes. Flamethrower up here. Yeah, instead of your 76 millimeter gun, yeah. And they put an extra flame retardant on the barrel so we can catch fire, basically. Can you imagine they, going out the, across the. These were used out on the islands. Yeah. The Japanese, they would pull up and they would shoot flames straight into the, like the Japanese holes. Bunkers and yeah. That's Andy Beale's favorite tank yes. right here. Yes. The Lee. M3 Lee, the official version of the Lee is the M3A3 on this one, so it's probably a later modification well, if from the original. The British Lee, they took off yeah. their very top button. Gun. And this one doesn't have the 50 caliber yeah. in there. No, in the very top, yeah. Right, the very top, the commander would be up there. Then they have another gunner in the World War II. Yeah. This was very, very good in World War II during the desert campaign. And then this crazy thing. The grandfather of them all. Ooh. This is a T5 E1 medium tank. And this is pretty much where it started for this line. And we're going to show you something interesting here in a minute on the back side of the tank, which makes this a pretty which is unique tank. What makes this also very unique is the two guns. Yes. 37 yeah, millimeter. in the front. But see these? These would actually have machine guns hanging out in the turrets, and they would move people. But what happened is they were scared when they went over a trench that the guys would wait for them to get on the trench, hunch down, and then come up and attack the back. But here's what they did. They actually put machine gun turrets in the back. And right here is a ricochet plate. They would shoot machine guns, ricochet, down here. Anybody could come up behind, back put a behind landmine them, yeah. or a grenade, or put a you know explosive yep. on the back, and they'd machine gun them yep. by shooting the ricochet plate. From the machine guns up coming out the back. Yep. So they would machine gun both plates same time and this would turn into a flying metal storm. Yep. And of course you can see the little gun slit. Oh yeah, on the back, yeah. Where they can get out and get pistols if somebody's going to pop. Yep. So that kind of makes that tank a little more unique than some of the others with these plates that they would use to... And we'll kind of walk back up the other side over here to some of the other cool stuff they've got. A few anti-tank guns that they have. What Russell and I have talked about before is this is a 37 millimeter anti-tank gun. Yeah. They get behind and they have a round about that long. Yeah. 
they pop that in there, and then they try to shoot the tiger tank with it. <laughs> yeah. off. And this is about how much armor you have. Oh, that yeah. Much. Not very thick. So, partners, you would not want to yeah. be in any hand. Half tracks. Yep. Some armored cars. Armored trucks. Who be? Who put that in here? I don't know. It's modern there. This had the dozer front. Yeah. And people are like, well, why did they have a dozer front? Well, that's because when they were pulling the tank, it'd start to slide. And the dozer so, yeah. The tank this is a tank recovery vehicle. Yeah. In other words, just actually tows the disabled tank back in. It's got the winch and everything, yeah. Look how thick that big was. Put the winch out here on this end of it. Now, here's a tank. Yeah. I had no idea about um, Everybody was saying, oh, Wolverine, because it's got the slope. Yeah. Inside, it actually comes down almost to a D. But we thought. It was a Hellcat, and we looked at it and we're like, no, it's not a Hellcat, it's not a Wolverine. It's actually an M43. You'll have to look at it again. But it is a tank destroyer. It is that much, an American tank destroyer. M36. M36, American tank destroyer. And basically what it is, is they grabbed the Sherman body, put the Sherman body on it. Chassis, yeah. Yeah, chassis. Turret was basically an open turret, but it had a 90 millimeter gun. Also, they had to push it by hand. Yeah. It wasn't the on turret, the turret. Yes. And this is the P23. P23. This is the one that was supposed to replace the turret. They said it was too advanced for most tankers. The engine was the same Sherman engine, a little doggy, driving on the Sherman engine. But if you look at the turret, like I told you, it's got the big armor front plate. It's got the smooth side, and then it comes back in an anchor. Yep. And these were the hooks that dropped the yeah. turret on. Turret going to the top. All the Sherman turrets were, you know, had the same turret size hole. But this had the 75, 76. Y'all can't lock it out, that bad boy, man. This is where they upscaled to the 90 millimeter. 90 millimeter was way more effective against the Panthers and the other German tanks than the 37 millimeter 80 tank gun. Able to do a knock. You guys get a chance to come down to Fort Benny. Yep. It's yep. worth the try. It is. And they're going to be adding to their collection here to be able to get on base to see. Mm-hmm. And we just 